Hey. My name is Rebecca and my partner is called Reese. We have been trying for a baby for quite a while and we were not successful. We weren't getting anywhere and it's very, very heartbreaking and extremely hard. Um, I started to worry that there might be something wrong with me. Maybe, um, maybe one of my tubes were blocked. So I spoke to my doctors and they ran some tests. They did a laparoscopy to see if my tubes were blocked or if I had endometriosis or anything else which could stop me from getting pregnant. Turns out uh, I didn't have anything noticeable that they could see. Um, it might have just been because of my age because I was a bit older, I was yes, almost 40. Um, so because of this, I was put in contact with a fertility clinic. So we went along and saw a fertility specialist, this amazing doctor called Dr. Walker. And I'm so glad I met him. He has been absolutely amazing for us. So I spoke to Dr. Walker with what was going on with me and he decided that he will prescribe me an ovulation drug because my cycles were starting to get quite long, um, quite spaced out, that that might have been the issue. Um, so he prescribed me this drug and he said, I must warn you, with all types of fertility treatment, you always have the risk of a multiple pregnancy, which I joked and I was like, oh, wouldn't it be great to have twins? <laughs> I remember him saying to me, twins, a pregnancy with twins or more is really hard work. I thought, oh, okay. But I love kids and I've been wanting to have more for a long time. I already had a, how old was she back then? She was probably 12 or 13 back when all of this happened. So I do have an older daughter. So yeah, armed with our prescription, off we went. We went off back home and on my very first round of taking this particular medicine, I got pregnant and the elation. Oh my goodness, fantastic, wonder drug. We got pregnant. So we ended up going back to the clinic to see the consultant because he wanted to you know, check that I was okay, see how many babies were in there, things like that. So I had a scan and I was seven weeks pregnant at that time. And because I'd had the uh, fertility drug, he had to check to see if there were any more babies because he's seen one and he had a really, really good look and there was just one baby in there. And that baby is called Noah. <laughs> Yes, we had a really good luck and there was no other babies in there. So we were really happy. Off we, we went off home, um, so excited. And we were also invited to go back a few weeks later. So I went back again for a scan at 10 weeks and the baby was fine. It was just bigger, um, more of a baby shape, I think. I can't really remember. I think it was like a little blob with maybe some stubs. Yeah, I think so. Like, like little stubby arms and legs starting to grow. So that was our journey into parenthood at that point. We were expecting a lovely little baby. And this was all before lockdown hit. I think it was the week after the 10 week scan that um, lock lockdown happened. So it was just pure luck really that Reese managed to see his little baby before uh, the hospitals all shut down. So my doctor said to me to contact the midwife and take it from there basically. So I contacted my midwife, I told them uh, my dates. Um, so they arranged for me to have my 12 week scan. I cannot remember if I, no, I did my booking in appointment with the midwife over the phone because lockdown had happened. So everything was all over the phone. Anyway, 12 week scan comes along. So I go to the hospital and unfortunately because lockdown had happened, Reese wasn't allowed in. He wasn't allowed in so he had to stay outside in the car park which was really sad actually. Um, but I went in on my own. I was actually quite nervous. So I get called in for my scan and I'm sat there and I'm having a chat with the lady that's going to scan me. So we discussed the fact that I've had fertility treatment, that I've already had two scans and that they've seen this baby and it's measuring fine etc etc. So she asks me to lay down on the couch, um, they turn the lights down and then she starts to scan me. And I'm led there and she is not saying a single word to me at all. She is just 
totally focused on the screen and I was actually starting to worry and all that was going through my head was the baby had died and I'd, I'd lost the baby um, and I really just wanted her to speak to me and I do remember holding on to my top like really really tight because obviously it was all pulled up I was holding on to it thinking oh my goodness just say something and she was looking she looked at me and she was almost her face was really really confused and she said do you know that you're expecting twins and I was like excuse me <laughs> she said yeah you're expecting twins and I said to her no I'm not you know I've already I've already had my scan she said you are and then she swung the monitor around and showed me the screen and I was looking at it and there was two babies on there I could not believe there was two babies on there I was like but I've already had these scans and there's only one baby and I was literally knocked over totally blown over I think I said this before if I was not led down on that bed I probably would have collapsed or fainted or something because that was pure shock it's not just like oh look it says your first scan you're pregnant with twins this was this is your third scan oh and now you're pregnant with twins because I wasn't pregnant with twins before when we had scans so you know this is bizarre it really didn't feel real at all it felt surreal um and I said to her is this really happening and she said yes because it literally felt like I was in a dream like I wasn't there like I was watching somebody else it just it was bizarre and I felt sorry for Reese because he wasn't in the room with me um he was missing out on all of this and I really could have done with him with me because I actually started to feel a bit strange because it was the news was just such a huge shock I really needed that support but obviously we had lockdown he wasn't with me he was actually outside in the car park in his car completely oblivious to what was going on she started you know looking a bit more <laughs> after we got over the initial shock that there was two babies in there she started looking more to see if there were any more babies in there at that point she could only see just the two and she did say to me that there is a big size difference between these two babies the first baby that we'd seen was measuring at 12 weeks as it was my 12 week scan and the second baby was actually measuring three weeks smaller than the first baby and she wasn't sure why it was measuring so much smaller and all that was going through my head was if a twin you know if there's a smaller baby with a twin it's usually because something's not right so I started to panic a bit then and she was trying to get some measurements thinking that maybe she's got it wrong she was kind of like getting me to shake around when I was led on the couch so I was trying to you know wiggle myself around <laughs> trying to get the baby to move into a different position um, but she kept getting the same kind of measurements so she said to me look just go for a walk go and jump up and down for a bit and then come back and then hopefully we'll be able to get some better measurements. So she printed off loads of scan pictures and she gave them to me. So clutching these scan pictures, I wander out of the room and I'm walking through the hospital in complete disbelief. Um, and I walk into the car park and I go and find Reese, And he's looking at me thinking, oh, well that was quick, you know. And I sat next to him in the car and I said to him, it's twins. And he just went, yeah, right, you know. He got hold of the scan pictures and he was having a look through them. And he was like, oh, look at all of this. Because he didn't see all of this before. He's like, oh, look at its, you know, its arms and its legs. And I remember him noticing the spine because it was quite noticeable. And I said to him again, it's twins. And he just ignored me, really, because he just thought I was messing around. And then he saw that it said twin one and twin two on the scan pictures and then it, it sunk in with him that there were two babies now if you ask Reese now he tells people that he thought I was playing a joke with him he thought that I'd somehow got these scan pictures off of the internet or something and I was just tricking him but then he said that when he looked at the, like the date and time it was like now so he then realized actually it wasn't a joke at all it's actually real and he was so happy it was so lovely to watch him he was just absolutely overjoyed 
but then he was just like how can this be you know you've we've you've had two scans already and there was just one baby in there so we we couldn't make sense of it but i said to him well i've got to go back in because she's not happy with the measurements so i've got to jump around and wiggle about a bit and then hopefully the baby would have moved so off i wander back into the hospital go and see her lay down and she's scanning away and she said no still exactly the same this baby is measuring smaller than the first the other baby everything seems to be there um it just looks like it's at a younger stage and then this is like where the rest of our lives change our journey into our twin pregnancy is like nothing i could ever have imagined <sighs> it's amazing so here's the second part to my story i had to go back for another scan um because the baby was then hopefully be measuring at 12 weeks for its 12 week scan so i go back three weeks later and lo and behold the baby has grown um in fact both babies have grown they've actually grown three weeks on both of them so 15 weeks for the first baby that we saw and then the second baby was measuring at 12 weeks so she did the measurements for that other baby and everything looked totally fine they then asked me to come back a few weeks later just to see if there's still a size discrepancy or not so i went back i think it was one or two weeks later after that and same thing baby was still measuring smaller and also at the scan i got to meet my consultant who was the consultant who i saw <laughs> for the fertility treatment so i got to meet him um his name is dr walker he is fantastic and his team so these people are going to be looking after me because i'm having a multiple pregnancy i sat with them for a while and they're trying to figure out what on earth was going on with me because the babies were measuring at different sizes and there was a consistency in their growth they were well they were consistent you know they were always three weeks between them if you don't know this already or if you haven't cottoned on this will be a huge surprise. I mean, oh, this is amazing. So they told me that I had gotten pregnant whilst I was already pregnant. I know, right? I know, it's bonkers. Imagine being me when they told me that. Um, Obviously, once again, Reese was not sat next to me. I was <laughs> completely on my own and he's outside in the car park, bless him. Um, yeah, so they told me that when I was pregnant with um, twin one, I ovulated again and then I got pregnant with twin two. And it was most probably because of the ovulation drug. That's what they were thinking at that particular time that I just ovulated again because of the fertility treatment so yeah I was pregnant and then I got pregnant a second time whilst already being pregnant now this literally is not supposed to happen at all is it I mean this is this is nuts <laughs> this is amazing news I was I, I didn't know what to think I remember thinking are they are they joking um but it's so much better than hearing we think that your baby is unwell you know something like that so hearing this was amazing news but it's also another thing of you know time will tell as well as long as there's the same size pattern going on through the pregnancy and the baby you know just basically remains to be like this always three weeks behind the first one then it just looks like it was conceived earlier and that's how it's going. And also the fact that because I've had my very, my first two scans so, so early on and there wasn't a sign of a second pregnancy, basically the egg would have been implanting into the wall when we first saw the first baby at seven weeks pregnant. I was four weeks pregnant with baby number two. Two weeks of those, you're not actually pregnant because that's like your period kind of time. And then the next two weeks are when you your egg gets fertilized, it comes down the fallopian tube and it's burying into the side of the womb. So that's what was happening when, when they were viewing 
the baby, the second baby, was not even in sight because it was buried into my uterus. And then at 10 weeks, the baby would have been really small. They weren't even looking out for another baby. They were just concentrating on the first baby. So they did say there is actually a name for this. This is called superfetation. I have had a superfetation pregnancy. Superfetation just means that I got pregnant whilst I was already pregnant. Um, pretty cool name, I thought. When I left the hospital, I was walking up to the car. I was like, oh my goodness, I couldn't wait to get to the car to tell Reese what they were telling me. And he was just like, this is crazy. It's like, yeah, but the, this is so weird. And then when we got home, I thought, right, I'm gonna Google this. And there was literally like nothing, nothing. But there was like so little um, knowledge or no, it's never really been spoken about. So there was nothing for me to read up on. I was hoping to be able to look at, look at it and think, okay, this is what's gonna happen. Um, I wanted to read other people's experiences of having a superfetation pregnancy, just so I knew what to expect or if there was any problems or anything like that. And there's literally like nothing out there. There was a lady over in Australia, um, apparently that this had happened to. So I contacted the hospital where she had her babies but they didn't bother to reply so that didn't help me at all and then whilst we were looking we found out that there'd only ever been 13 documented cases of a superfetation pregnancy in the world ever ever so we were number 14 which was amazing this was amazing this is like this is like winning the lottery i think the odds actually i I think the odds is more like winning the Euros. <laughs> it's that hard. I mean, I'd love to win the Euros, but we we had um, a superfetation pregnancy instead. I mean, I'd like to have both, but you know. There was little to no information. It was basically living the unknown. And I was actually quite quite nervous about it, quite worried, yeah. I really didn't know what to expect. Moving on from learning about my twins being conceived at different times, I decided to set up an Instagram account, like I was saying, and I was talking to some other mothers on some groups that I had joined on Facebook. So they come over and started following my amazing journey on Instagram. And then when the twins were born, they were born on the same day. So there are some questions like this I have had. Yes, they were born on the same day. Um, they were actually, they were actually two minutes between them when they were born and the baby that was conceived first was also born first. Could you imagine if it was the other way around? The second baby was born before the first baby. It's like, wow, that is weird. You know, <laughs> who really is the oldest here? The first baby was born at 33 weeks and six days. And then the second baby was born at 30 weeks and six days but it was exactly the same day. There's literally two minutes between them. So the first baby was a boy and we called him Noah. And the second baby is a girl and we called her Rosalie. Some people have been asking um, if this was a twin to twin transfusion syndrome that had happened, which that's not what happened at all because with that, one of the babies well, it's, it's a twin pregnancy, or it could be multiples. Um, one of the babies takes all the nutrients and then leaves the other baby almost like starving. But they were, they're they non-identical. One's a girl and one's a boy. They had their own sacs, their own placentas, everything. So that wasn't the case at all. They were literally conceived at different times. And looking at Rosalie when she was born, you could see she was so much younger. Oh my goodness, she was so much younger. So the rest of my pregnancy, after after telling us that it was a superfetation pregnancy parts of it was very up and down it was hard it was not plain sailing in the slightest i have often thought about talking about this um but it is really hard when i think about it it is hard sometimes it brings me to tears so maybe I, maybe I will speak about it 
in a separate video. I'll do a completely separate video about it. I don't really know how I would, what I would call the video. So there is more to my story, but we just haven't really spoken about it just yet. When we brought the twins home from the NICU, we decided to tell people that the babies had been born. We shared our story on Facebook and people were so gobsmacked with the fact that our twins were conceived at different times, three weeks apart. My story started to get shared. Um, I couldn't believe it. Yeah, all these people I'd never even heard of before were commenting on my post and liking it and sharing it. And it was thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And the next thing, the Daily Mail contacting me asking for a story from us. And we thought, wow, really? This is really cool. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So we spoke to the Daily Mail and they were the first people that we spoke to. And then our story just went all over the world. We started off on our local, our regional BBC news. And then BBC Breakfast, Saturday morning, we were live with Naka Manchetti and, oh my goodness, I can't remember his name. This other, this this guy, he's, he's a great presenter. I'm so sorry, I can't remember your name. So we were live on TV then. Obviously it was via Zoom because we couldn't be there with lockdown restrictions and whatnot. And then we were live on Good Morning America and some other American TV shows also the breakfast TV show over in Australia. Yeah, so our story has hit the news all around the world and it has been so lovely to share our story about our twins. So if you still want to know more or follow us and learn more about my myself and my family, we've had two more children since the twins, then you can subscribe to my YouTube channel here where I share our daily life, we do vlogs, family things, I do all sorts to do with motherhood, parenthood, lifestyle, all sorts and obviously the twins are involved as well so yeah subscribe to my YouTube channel also come and follow us over on Instagram um, roberts.superdwins is my Instagram name I don't know if I'm going to keep it that name forever so have a look at the description box just in case you're watching this nearest to come and I've changed the name of the Instagram channel but yeah we're over there as well I'm also on TikTok um I believe my TikTok handle is Rebs Robs, but I will also put that in the description box. So that is the story of my amazing twins. They are the 14th documented case in the world ever. Um, well, if you go and Google superfetation twins, you may just see my face pop up and my lovely twins and my wonderful partner Reese. So yeah, go and give us a Google. <laughs> Oh God, what a ridiculous thing to say. But definitely come and follow us on Instagram and subscribe to my channel here on YouTube if you would like to know more about us. And I'm also gonna do some follow-up videos about my pregnancy as well because I haven't actually done that. Wow, I've done my pregnancy about my last baby. He's actually four months old now, his name is Leo. So yeah, the twins are three and a half, almost. Yeah, they're almost three and a half now. They are wonderful absolutely fantastic children so thank you so much for watching my video i hope i haven't waffled on too much if you wanted to know anything just put it in the comment section and i'll try and get back to you or drop me a message over on instagram as well thank you so much for watching my video don't forget to like it if you like my video and don't forget to subscribe and i will see you in my next video so take care and i will see you soon bye